Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan. Let's talk about Eternia. So recently, I was invited out to Mattel headquarters to participate in their 40th anniversary of Masters of the Universe Influencer event. Uh, this was just a small event that they held where they essentially showed off a bunch of new products coming out and gave us some details on some things like Eternia. Now, if you haven't already seen it, I did a whole video where I talked about all of the reveals that happened at this event. Today, I want to focus solely on Eternia just to talk about this current crowdfunding campaign, all of the details, and share some of the video with you guys from this event. So right off the top, let's go ahead and just run down the details. Eternia is a Mattel Creations crowdfunding campaign. If you have never participated in a crowdfunding campaign before, essentially what that means is that there is a set price, which in this case is $550, and there is a threshold that they have to meet. In this case, 5,000. That means they need 5,000 people to commit to purchasing this in order for this item to go into production. So the campaign will run for one month. It opened up here in October and it's going to run uh, sometime in November over at MattelCreations.com. So if the 5,000 minimum backers is met, that means that this goes into production and everybody that backed it and paid their $550 will be rewarded with an Eternia playset. Now, crowdfunding campaigns typically have stretch goals, which means if they hit certain targets or certain numbers of backers, they start throwing in extras, bonuses, new items that you don't have to pay additional money for. That $550 price tag is the set price tag. And then if this continues to grow, Mattel just adds new things to sweeten the pot. So if you back this in the first week, you are an early bird, which means you are rewarded with a bonus action figure, which is an Origins King Grayskull. Now, this Origins King Grayskull action figure will be exclusive to this campaign and only delivered to the people who back this at that early bird level. At least that is what Mattel is saying right now. So they don't have plans to release this figure outside of the campaign. If the campaign gets to 8,000 backers, they toss in the Moat Monster. Now, this is inspired by one of the little creatures that was sculpted into the moat on the Vintage Eternia playset. Now he is a fully articulated action figure, and he gets thrown in for free if we hit that 8,000 backer threshold. If we get to 10,000 backers, they throw in their final bonus figure, which is an Origins figure of Keklar the Elder. Very deep cut character, but Keklar is a character from the old UK comic books. He is the leader of the Elders, uh, and he will be exclusive to this campaign, and that only happens if the campaign hits the 10,000 backers. So, essentially, this is what we've got. $550. $50 flat rate shipping in the U.S., so $600 total. If we get the full 10,000 or beyond backers, you get the Eternia playset plus three bonus action figures as well. King Grayskull, Moat Monster, Keklar the Elder. So those are the details. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to some footage of all of this news from this Mattel Influencer Day event. Uh, I also have photos of the slides, so when they're talking about certain things, I'll put slides on the screen as well. That way you guys can see everything that Mattel had to say about this. We start off with a sketch. Obviously, um, we, we had the vintage item to, to uh, look at, uh, dissect, and, and figure out everything that it does. It did a lot of things well. It's gigantic. It looked great, lots of great detail, lots of fun play. But, you know, we looked at it and said, what can we make better? What, what can we make to give today's fans and collectors a compelling reason to buy into, uh, into this playset? So we start with the sketch here um, and start to think about, you know, we, we've got this uh, great action with, with the arms that open up and, and the jaw that opens and closes. What else does it do? What, what else can we do to it um, to make it even that much more compelling? 
So now we start getting into color and uh, thinking about, gee, we've got this great space in back where, where can we do something more to the, uh, the armory? Can we add a, a suit of armor in there that, that could act as like a sparring dummy that, that wasn't in, in the original? What, what else can we do with, with this piece? For example, you, you look at Viper Tower. It's got that great snake on the top of the head. A feature where it was like a periscope, and you could manipulate the uh, manipulate, and turn it around. Well, why can we get it to strike at something that's going uh, around the uh, the uh, the tram? Can we get it the mouth to open and really try to get some more compelling play features? Because at the end of the day, you know, we like to set our stuff up, but we want to play with it too, and, and it's got to be cool in that respect as well. Uh, so we have some figures. This is where we talk about the tiers. Sure. Okay. So I'll let uh, Josh help me out a little bit, but for the first tier is the early bird special, um, and that is going to come with King Gray Skull. Uh, first time you've seen him in this form in origin styling uh, and proportions. The second tier will be the Moat Monster. Um, really like this guy. If any of you recall, the original uh, moat had a, a sculpted in relief of a creature in the bottom. And that was one of the things we thought about. Let's bring this guy to life. Let's, let, let's put the spotlight on him and uh, you know, actually have a figure that, that can hang out in the moat and uh, run around the, uh, the place at walls. Um, and then finally, we have uh, Keklar which is one of the oldest and uh, wisest of the um, Eternian elders. He was actually there at the creation of the Sword of He. Um, I don't believe we've ever seen this character before, uh, so it will be the third tier of our uh, crowdfund. All this will be available in the press kit later. So a, a lot of it, you know, it, I don't want to say painstaking because it, it really is a labor of love, but we, we really try to harness uh, all the labels, um, all the detail that we have going on, the vibrant colors, um, and, and recreate that so, so fans and collectors know that they have something that is authentic, um, but also you know go back in, where can we add detail here? Where can we sharpen um, the, the castle walls, give it more texture? Uh, and, and different things like that. Um, we, we get fabric flags that, that go on the top of uh, the central tower. And then this is based, this is what we call a, a B sheet. This is what we show to uh, our partners um, to really sell the product at this point. Obviously, you can see we've got uh, a 3D digital rendering of what's going on and it, it calls out the different uh, tiers for the crowdfund, but also all of the features that uh, we've built into the list. And uh, this is, is a bit of an eye chart, but it gives you an idea of uh, the decoration that goes on there. Each one of those uh, little uh, marks is, is, a, is a decoration. Some of them take, uh, we have free hands, we have plates, we have book masks, all kinds of different things. Uh, and, and some of the parts are uh, painted. Uh, by hand uh, that, that you'll see, but uh, it, it gives you an idea of the depth and everything that goes into the production of really any product that we want to do. This is an example of, of the accessories that come with it. We have recreated the, um, the top of the central tower and added a new uh, uh, place in the armory to put all of the accessories that it comes with. You can see the uh, horde trooper uh, dummy that attaches to the um, the top of the, the command chair that's on the second floor. So as as you move the command chair, it will move around at the top, so you have some extra fun play there. That was not in the uh, original vintage uh, set. And oh boy, <laughs> um, that's a lot of stuff. This is uh, just. Just an example of all the different things where, where you know, we've taken photographs and done overlays and talked about texture, but, you know, down to the ball and chain on uh, Grayskull Tower. It was very kind of machined cut piece that uh, was on there. We've added sculpted uh, texture to that. 
Uh, you look at the, the Snake on Viper Tower, it has so much more um, depth and, and character to it by, by adding uh, a, a real snake texture to it. Um, it really just go on and on. I think one of the main things that, that we were able to do in, in, in addition to um, with the, the great uh, feature with the arms is we've added this orb of power where you can actually move that as, as a lever and you have a two-part movement that really helps bring it to life along with the uh, opening of the mouth, which did not used to be a connected feature, now we have it linked. So when when you move the orb of power, the uh, it really grabs at whatever character you have um, sitting in front of the uh, attorney tower. And, and just other small things, adding different detail. You know, can we take the ladder? Where else can we put it? Um, how, how are kids and collectors gonna play with this? We've extended the back of Grayskull Tower so there's more area to set up figures and display. We've added a, uh, a trapdoor feature. And just simply adding things like grips and saying, is there another way to play with this sky sled? Can it be an emplacement of some kind of set of your figures? So, I mean, really, it, it, it would be take an extensive amount of time to go over everything that we've tried to put into this, but I think oh, in a lot of ways it really speaks, speaks for itself. It's amazing. Steve, speak to how you might have a full five-foot table to okay. display this. How you might have an option to display this amazing piece. So, it's, it's huge, and if you don't have a, a dining room table or coffee table that big to set it up, we have taken into consideration the fact that maybe you, can, you want to set it up in three different uh, sections. So it is easy to break up um, in, into, uh, you can have the Viper Tower, Grayskull Tower um, in one area, and if you want to have the Central Tower just displayed on its own, we've worked out a way to have the, the track run only around the central tower so oh, you can have cool. that uh, That's cool. is set up on its own and uh, have that front and center as well. Um, more, more detail that we've added, uh, we have used to seeing the uh, projectile launching turret that you see King Grayskull on there, um, kind of on the top. We thought, where else can it go? What, what else could it be that's compelling? So we, we added some nuances to the sculpt. So it can go on top of Grayskull Tower, as you can see on the left up there. And, you know, in addition to having spaces for the great labels, which I think really help bring it to life, there are some smooth areas. So you can see in the front of, of the, of the uh, projectile launcher here, we've added a lot more uh, relief detail to make it look more realistic and give it that technological edge that uh, we really know and love. That's, that's Masters of the Universe. These are additional um, overlays and sketches. You can see with the sky cage we've added um, raised and recessed detail because it, it was really kind of plain before, but I urge you to take a closer look at, at the uh, different parts of uh, the, the different areas on the sky cage and really see where we've uh, gone along there. Here's some sketches. We have the, the Viper Tower and the the Grayskull Tower were floorless. They didn't have a base at, at the bottom before, but, but now we've added some, some texture base uh, detail to uh, really fill in some of the gaps that uh, may have been on the original line. By the way, if it feels like it's a lot, it is a lot. <laughs> that it took, I think, two years for us to get to this point. So, you know, the team has been really hard at work and really making this a masterpiece so. so just wanted to share with you guys early early sketches or sketch of what the um, packaging artwork will look like or be um, so this is an early sketch here and um, as you can see you know uh, we definitely want to honor the actual vintage box art you know and you know honor that but at the same time you know in true origins fashion you know we we want to um, just layer in a couple more extra Easter eggs there, as you guys can see, sort of like on the left side, you know, we have um, sort of this portal right there um, that's happening, you know, um, you see sort of like the pre-Ternia world coming into Eternia there. Um, same thing with um, the, the right side right there, you know, we have um, the Castle Grace, or the, sorry, that's Snake Mountain there. Um, honestly, obviously honoring um, the early William George posters, the way they sort of had those little mountain trails 
leading up to the two uh, castles. So we're doing that. So this is just a really early, early sketch of you know what the artwork will look like. Obviously, we're still going to um, pack it in there with more detail, more extra characters, and a lot of more Easter eggs. But I'm going to give you this with you guys. So, as Steve mentioned, the base set, also on display behind you, uh, will come with that early bird special for the first week. So early bird for a backer bonus. It will be listed at $550. And then it will come with that King Grayskull, as we mentioned, with a 5,000 backer threshold for us to meet the crowdfund. For the moat creature, which will be our next tier, when we get to 8,000 backers, we'll come free with the set. And then Keklar the Elder, when we reach 10,000 backers. All right, so there you go. Some really cool details there. I think it's really interesting looking at the scale of this thing. When I saw this at San Diego Comic-Con, when I first walked in, I thought, oh, cool. They've got the vintage Eternia as a display. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized it was a brand new sculpt. It was not the vintage one. I eyeballed it and thought it was around the same size, but it turns out this new one is bigger than the vintage one. And the vintage one is already massive. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, the original one stood about 30 inches tall, uh, central tower. This new one stands 35 inches tall. So it is five inches taller than the vintage one. It also has a 48 inch width to it when you have all of the towers connected, the monorail track. So this is a huge play set. It's going to take up a lot of room. Uh, I mentioned in the other video, there's a great slide where they show a seven inch Masterverse He-Man standing alongside it. So you can see the scale and they even have kind of like the doors and everything on this sized right around that mark. So the seven inch figure could display with this well also that's good for you masterverse or your classics collectors out there i do not know if that means that they will fit in the monorail vehicle but this is still a massive playset, so it should display well honestly with any of your masters of the universe collections and one thing i've seen a lot of people saying which makes a ton of sense if you're a vintage collector and you've never picked up the original because the original is so obscure and expensive now uh this will display with your vintage figures as well and uh i know that the 600 dollar mark is not cheap but it is cheaper than buying a vintage one and that's just one of those things that is worth thinking about and i think that's important when we're talking about these right it's not my job to sway you one way or the other on this in fact i think that crowdfunding campaigns are the perfect opportunity for fans to vote with their wallets if this is too expensive, if you don't think that all of this is worth the money, this is your opportunity to just not back it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where they are putting this in the fans' hands and the fans are going to decide if this happens or not. So uh, I am not going to be sitting here rallying to push this thing through. That doesn't mean that I don't want it to happen. I just believe in people really voting with their dollars on this stuff. And I think people should only spend the money if they have the money and they are okay with spending the money. Am I going to back it? Yes, I am going to back this. Um, I, uh, Masters of the Universe is my primary collection. It's what I focus on. Uh, I honestly, I was kind of hoping that they wouldn't do an Eternia playset because I don't know where I'm going to put it. My vintage one's not even currently on display, but I am going to back it because uh, I love this line. It's my primary collection. I definitely want to do a video on it because that's a thing that I do. Um, but also, like, I haven't been backing any of the other recent crowdfundings from anywhere else because Masters is my main thing. And I knew, like, especially after Comic-Con, I knew I had to reserve money specifically for this. So there's my stance on it. Just throwing that out there for everybody. Uh, I think all of the bonus figures are a very nice touch. I kind of wish that the King Grayskull was all the way through and not just a pre-order bonus, but getting three brand new figures with it definitely sweetens the pot. Um, also, I love some of the other design elements that they've done with it, like the idea that they took the monorail track system and made it so it can be reconfigured to only wrap around the central tower so that you can separate those towers amongst your display if you need to save shelf space. Uh, I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was a really great idea. 
They also really talked about how uh, this thing has got a lot more heft to it than the vintage one. If you've never seen the vintage one, uh, the towers are hollow on the inside. Like there's no floor on the Gray Skull and Snake Mountain towers, the Serpent Tower and, and everything. So um, in this one, they, they've fully built out the bases and there's floors on the inside. There's all kinds of stuff on the elevators and lots of things going on there. So it's it's a big functional playset with a lot going on. Um, and I do think it is very cool. I'm kind of blown away that we're getting something like this. I never would have thought we'd have another chance at Eternia, especially since the vintage Eternia was considered a failure. If you guys don't know the story with that, um, they ended up having to cut production off on the vintage one at only 4,000 units because it wasn't selling. It was just too big. Retailers didn't want to carry it. The line was already d uh, dying at that point, so it wasn't bringing in money, which is why nobody had this playset. And it's why there are so few of the vintage one out there today and why it commands such high secondhand prices. So all of that maybe goes into your consideration for if you want to purchase this or not. Uh, but nonetheless, crowdfunding campaign is running for one month at MattelCreations.com. I hope that this helped you guys out. I hope I was able to provide a bunch of information for this thing. This is new for us to really have a crowdfunding thing. I guess we did sort of have crowdfunding with Classics Castle Grayskull because even though that was a pre-order, they they had to meet a minimum. So that was like that was like a proto crowdfunding campaign all the way back in what was that 2015 or something. Um, so yeah, that's pretty interesting there. But yeah, there you go, guys. Eternia coming to Origins or any of your Masters of the Universe collections uh, as long as the crowdfunding campaign succeeds. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. And until next time, my friends.